Welcome to the seventh segment of Techmar's Snowmelt Control Training webinar series. In this seventh segment, we're going to again be talking about the features of the Snowmelt Control 654. This feature set, feature set 3, is going to focus on the Techmar Net communication features that are possible now that Techmar has a Snowmelt Control that's compatible with Techmar Net communication. The outline for this presentation is as follows. We'll begin by looking at how the 654 can communicate with other TechMarnet devices. We'll look at how we can connect it to TechMarnet system controls, how we can connect to other Snowmelt Control 654s, how we can connect a user switch and what we can do with a user switch, and connections to the gateway 483 and 482. The Snowmelt Control 654 is Techmar's first TechmarNet Snowmelt Control. You can see we have the TN4 and C terminals, and we can use those terminals to connect to any TechmarNet device. And we'll look at all those devices and controls in the following slides. As you can see here, we can use TechmarNet communication to communicate from the 654 back and forth to a system control to a gateway control, and to a user switch. Let's look at connecting to a system control. Now this will give us a comprehensive control solution. So we can have all of our controls communicating with each other through TechMarnet, and all of that communication can be coordinated. So here we have shown the boiler control 284 and we've highlighted the TN4 and C terminals on the 284 and how we could connect the TechMarnet 654 through those same TN4 and C terminals. So it would be two wires from the control to, in this case, the boiler control 284 and then we would have TechMarnet communication between the two control points. We have shown here the boiler control 284, but we in fact can connect to any of the, the TechMarnet boiler controls. So that means the 274, the 275. We can also connect to any of the house controls. And we can connect to the reset modules. So the 420, 421, 422, and 423. The other benefit of having a snowmelt control with TechMarnet communication is that now we can connect multiple snowmelt controls together for a multi-zone snowmelt system. So here in the image we show three of the 654s that are connected together through the TN4 and C terminals, but we can have up to 12 654s connected. The maximum is a 12-zone snowmelt system. Um, but it does give us that capability to have a unified control solution with TechMarnet communication for multi-zone systems. Of course, now that we have TechMarnet communication, we can also take advantage of remote access. So we can monitor and remotely activate or deactivate the storm, idle, or melt snowmelt states using TechMarnet communication. Now we can use a user switch 480 or 481 and configure it for storm, melt, and away. So that at the touch of one button, we can put our snowmelt system into the storm state after hearing on the news that there is an expected snowfall coming. Or if we are manually operated our system, then we can push the melt button and trigger a melt cycle to occur in our snowmelt system. And of course, we can put our system into the away mode as well by pushing the away button on a user switch. And that will make sure that the snowmelt system does not respond to any melt, idle, or storm states. So here we have showing what it would look like on the 654. This slide is showing in greater detail how the 654 can respond to seeing changes from a user switch. So here I have shown that I have pushed the away button on my user switch. And what will show up on my 654 is the word away. And it will also tell me my snowmelt system is off because I'm in the away state. So the similar operation will happen if you push the melt button it will say melt 
instead of off. And if you push the storm button, it would say storm, where off is written here as well. Now this is great for a single zone. What if I have a multi-zone system? How would each of those zones respond to a user switch? Would I need multiple user switches? Well, the nice thing about the 654 is that we have developed what we call melt groups and storm groups. So if you can remember my earlier example of a multi-zone system where I had a driveway and a front walkway along with a side pathway and a patio. And in my system, the driveway and the front walkway were high priority areas. If it's snowing, I want to make sure my driveway and my front walkway are safe. So I want to melt snow there first. My side walkway and my patio are lower priority items. They're nice to haves. So I can separate those zones into different storm groups. And this is what it would look like on a user switch. I'd have storm group one, storm group two, and away. Now when I program my 654s, I can set up zone one to be a part of storm group one, and I can set up snow zone two to also be part of storm group one. And that way whenever I press the storm group one button on my user switch, it will trigger the storm operation for zones one and zone two only. So you can see there, zone three and zone four remain off. I can do the same thing for those zones though. I can program each of those 654s to be part of storm group two. And then if I were to push the storm group two button on the user switch, both zone three and zone four would begin the storm operation. If I were to push storm group two, then zone three and zone four would also begin the storm operation. I can do the very same thing for melt groups. I could put zone one and zone two into a melt group, and zone three and zone four into their own melt group as well. And then I would add another user switch that would have melt group one, melt group two. So this is a great added feature that increases the functionality of the snowmelt system by making it even more user friendly so that you can operate your zones as you want to operate, operate them based on the priority of snow melting for those areas. Now we can connect our snowmelt control to a gateway. And I know a lot of you have been waiting for this for a long time, so here we are. This is a screenshot from our very own gateway here at Tecmar, where we have connected a 654. You can see under the temperatures tab, I will have what I've named snowmelt driveway, and it will show me the current temperature of that slab. Now the setting will only come up, of course, when I'm in the melt state or the storm state, or if I had chosen to use idle, then I would see a setting here as well. Below we have the scenes tab. So this is a screenshot from the scenes tab. And here we can see more closely, we have our normal away and unoccupied scene. In addition to that, we can see it says snow or set point or snow melting controls and it says activate a control. So I can put my driveway into the melt state by clicking on active. I can also put my driveway into the storm preheat state by clicking on active. So this is the functionality that you would see on your gateway if you connect the 654 to the gateway 483. Here's another screenshot where we're showing you the system details page. So this is my snowmelt driveway. My current state is off, and that's why I don't see a slab target there. My slab temperature is 28 degrees, and my snow ice sensor status is dry, so I'm not detecting moisture. That's why my state is off. If it were operational, I'd also be able to see my supply temperature, 
the status of my system pump, my boiler target, and my boiler rate. So it does provide quite a bit of information on how your snowmelt system is operating. And you can graph that information as well if you want to look at how it's operating over a longer period of time. We can also connect R654 to a gateway 482. And what we can do with that is by touching our home automation screen, we can put our snow melt system into the melt state, into the storm state, or turn it off. So it's sort of like having a user switch built into your home automation. Now I do want to state here that the ability to operate snow melting using a gateway 482 is subject to support by the home automation dryer. So you should consult with your home automation company for details on whether or not they have written the driver or when they plan to do so. In summary, we looked at how the TechMarnet communications aspect of the 654 allows us to have system integration. We can connect to TechMarnet system controls. We can also connect to snow melting controls for multi-zone snow melt systems. We can use the user switch for added convenience and put our system into the melt storm and away statuses with the touch of one button. And I can also organize my multi-zone snow melt system into melt and storm groups so I could operate high priority areas as necessary and choose not to operate the lower priority areas. We looked at how we can connect to a 483 and what that functionality is. What can you see on the 483? What can you control? You can move it into different scenes and you can change the temperature. And of course you have the graphing capability if you want to look at long-term trends in your snowmelt system. We can also connect to a gateway 482. So we can incorporate your snowmelt system into the home automation system so that you have added convenience and added functionality from the home automation system. Now we've come to the end of all three of the feature set training segments for this training webinar series. Stay tuned for the last training segment, which will be segment number eight, in which we go over all of the technical details for the Snowmelt Control 654. So that includes mechanical, electrical diagrams for the 654 with the essential settings, and other details that you need to know to program the 654 for your particular application.